The Steelers did not end the season in the greatest of fashion, falling in a nightmare playoff game against the rival Browns at Heinz Field. A long off season is on the horizon with many major decisions to be made. We will break down the current roster and make some predictions about what happens in the spring. It's all coming up next on a special edition of Steelers Extra Point. The Steelers Extra Point Show, presented by Neighborhood Ford Store. Good morning, everyone, and welcome inside our KDK TV studios for the final edition of Steelers Extra Point for the 2020 season. I'm Bob Pompiani. You know, after an 11 0 start, the Steelers, man, everything came crashing down as the team ended with just one win in their final six games, losing in the first round of the playoffs for the second time in the last four years, and falling to one of the biggest rivals to boot. Changes already underway. Rich Walsh has a look at how things came crashing down so quickly. Thanks, Bob. It was definitely one of the most disappointing ways to end the season, and that has led to some major shifts on the team with even bigger questions looming. After starting the season as one of the league's hottest teams with an 11-0 start, the Steelers came tumbling down to the finish, ending the season with a 1-5 record. Losses to Washington, Buffalo, Cincy were bad, but losing to the Browns in back-to-back -back weeks, including the first round of the playoffs, was the icing on the cake. Um, I don't think anybody in the building was expecting to uh, you know, not be still playing uh, around this time of the year. We just wasn't executing. I think there was a lot of miscommunication and, and you know, little details here and there and we just wasn't you know clicking after the dust settled from the loss the Steelers decide to clear out some names on the coaching staff Thursday first it was announced that offensive coordinator Randy Feekner offensive line coach Sean Surrett and defensive backs coach Tom Bradley Feekner was the man blamed for a lot of the offensive inability and woes this season while Serrett was to blame for the offensive line that was hurting the run game another coaching staff loss was the retirement of longtime tight ends coach James Daniel who spent 17 seasons with the franchise. You know, I'm not going to maintain status quo and, and, and hope that the outcome changes. That's, you know, that's the definition of insanity. And this may not be the end of the dismissals and departures in 2021, both on the coaching staff and the active roster. Due to a clamped salary cap, large cap hits, and a long list of unrestricted free agents, the future of many major names on this team is not certain. I know I'm going to miss definitely the relationships and just going out there and playing with those guys because, you know, we put in a lot of effort. I don't know what God has in plan for those uh, the veteran guys, but uh, all I know is that, you know, I'm so thankful for those guys. You know, I still have a year left on my contract. Uh, I hope the Steelers want me back if, if, if that's the way we go. And, uh, there'll be a lot of discussions, but, but now's not the time for that. I don't know what to expect. Um, we are in uncharted territory, uh, to say the least. And um, changes have to be made. That's part of the game. Now the Steelers prepare for a unique offseason. It will be interesting to see how Kevin Colbert and Mike Tomlin handle the change. Bob? All right, Rich, thanks. Yeah, lots of changes apparently on the horizon already have started. We bring in two of our experts, Charlie Batch, our quarterback of the program, as well as our insider from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Does a great job covering the Steelers, Mr. Jerry Dulac. Charlie, I'm going to start with you. Uh, it's been reported. It's not confirmed by the Steelers, who have not made an announcement, but it appears as if Matt Canada will be the new offensive coordinator. That's another hire from inside the organization. Is that the right way to go? I think in this case, yes. I mean, I, and I love the heck out of Randy Feekner. I mean, I've, I've been around him. I love everything he stands for. I love his family. But when you look at these particular situations, man, this is the business decision that happens. So when you have a quarterback coach who's been here one season, of course, you're going to look at him to elevate him in the manner that you did with Randy Feekner to the offensive coordinator. So you hope everything works out and it starts with bringing him back and what is the uh, offense going to look like? What's the verbiage going to look like? More importantly, who's going to be your quarterback next season? Yeah, that all makes sense. Uh, the only thing I would have done is continue to look outside the organization because I think there are plenty of good offensive candidates out there. All right, Jerry Dulac of the Post-Gazette uh, offensive line. Mike Munchak leaves and Sean Surrett was promoted from within and now he's gone. Uh, where does this offensive line go? Well, Bob, to your point about going outside, maybe for a coordinator, I don't think there's any question that's what they're going to do with an offensive line coach. And I would venture to say their offensive line coach could be just as important as their offensive coordinator, particularly if they just promote uh, Matt Canada. But they need to bring a guy in with, in, uh, with experience 
They need to uh, bring in a guy who is going to change their scheme and change their technique. Because you know darn well that Art Rooney and Kevin Colbert want to run the football better. And not just better, they want to run the football. And they feel that is the best way for Ben Roethlisberger to survive going forward. Yeah, I think that makes sense. It also some play action. A lot of different things can happen from a healthy run game. All right, we're just getting started. Coming up next, we're going to go position by position and break down the Steelers' offensive roster. So you could be back and who might be hitting the road, according to Charlie and Jerry. That's next right here on the Steelers Extra Point. Sports fan, we want to see what you got. That's what I'm looking for. Show us your fan cave, your crazy collections and costumes, or your tailgates and tattoos. Send us an email or go to our website to be featured on JP Roofing Fan Nation. Your Day Pittsburgh with Heather, David, Ron, and John. News headlines, check. The day's weather, check. Original reporting, check, check. This is the news you want from people that you want to have breakfast with. This is Your Day Pittsburgh, weekday mornings on KDKA TV. In the truck game, greatness is defined by a relentless commitment to the customer. Forged over decades, built by a team resolute in helping you achieve your greatness. Experience this award-winning lineup today. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling truck for 44 years straight and counting. Got a 2020 F-150 with 10000 in total value or lease for just $3.99 a month for 24 months. Only at your neighborhood Ford store. At J.P. Roofing and Siding, the customer satisfaction has always been number one. That means the most to me, that that customer is satisfied. I'll go to great lengths to take care of anything that needs to be taken care of. I have a passion for this business. I love what I do. We want to keep this legacy going of J.P. Roofing, of doing quality work. At J.P. Roofing and Siding, quality long remembered at a fair price. You want to make every game interesting? Step one, open the BetMGM Sportsbook. Step two, put some skin in the game. And step three, showtime. TDs, back with K's, RBIs, and the TKO's, they B-I-G. Now you're in the ring with the king of sportsbooks. You know what to do. Every new smile starts at Aspen Dental with custom crafted dentures made in our on-site labs and ready in as little as a day. We give you unparalleled safety at every visit, natural looking results you'll love, and options for every budget. Now during our Everyday Smiles event, get new dentures for as low as $29 per month per arch with 60 months financing. Find every reason to smile every day at Aspen Dental. Call 1-800-ASPEN-DENTAL or book today at aspendental.com. Welcome back to Steelers Extra Point, presented by Neighborhood Ford Store. Welcome back to the program, and let's take a look at the final stats presented by J.P. Roofing. Ben Roethlisberger, of course, 3,800 yards, 65% completion percentage, 33 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. As far as Connor is concerned, that's a low total for your main running back, although his average is 4.3. And Deontay Johnson led them in yards with 923. His 88 catches were second behind Juju Smith-Schuster, who had 97. And of course, we're going to start where everyone's talking about this week, the quarterback position, because Ben Roethlisberger does have one year left. As you take a look at these guys, he and Mason Rudolph both have one year left. The cap figure for Ben Roethlisberger will be the tops of the NFL, the entire league next year at 41.2. Mason Rudolph, a lot of wonder about what he's going to do in the future after this coming season. Dobbs and Hodges are not signed for the moment. So, Charlie Batch, we'll start with you. The quarterback expert is Ben back in 2021. I think he is. I mean, based off the season that he had last year, I think the elbow, he proved that he's uh, back healthy again. But you have to get this out the way quickly, and that allows you to move forward because you know the cap space is needed to move forward. So I think they get it done. And if they don't, that means they have to admit the Steelers nation that we are in a rebuilding year come 2021. Yeah, normally this franchise doesn't admit they're in a rebuild. They want to win a championship. Mike Tomlin made that very clear again at his press conference. Jerry, I want to ask you what's best for the Steelers. We know what's best for Ben. He wants to come back, and I still think he can uh, play at a decent level. What about you? What's best for them? 
Well, Bob, I would agree. I don't think there's any question he can still perform, and I don't think there's any question he wants to come back contingent on several players still being on that football team. And if not, then he has to make a decision. But uh, look, the guy's a franchise quarterback. He's a two-time Super Bowl winner. I think you saw during the year he can still make every throw. Uh, that is still the best course of action for them. They have to figure out a way, which they will, to sign them to some extension to lessen the cap hit. I think they'll do that. I think he'll be back. All right, let's talk about his weapons because he has some young receivers. He also has receivers and tight ends who are almost done with their contracts. Uh, leading the way is Juju Smith-Schuster. He is looking for a team, and he's gone on TikTok and pretty much asked people where he should go. James Washington is signed through next season. So is Eric Ebron and Vance McDonald. We'll get to the tight ends in a second, but that is the money allocation for these guys at the wide receiver. And, Charlie, I'll start with you on Juju Smith-Schuster. Ben Roethlisberger has actively said he wants him back. Will he come back? Do you think he'll make that decision, or will he move on? No, I think he moves on because it's strictly business, and this is the first time in his career that he actually gets an opportunity to get paid on the free agent market. So I think a team will make an offer for him that he just can't refuse, so he won't be back. But I think when you look back at the receiver position, Kevin Colbert has done a phenomenal job of finding gems in the draft. Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, James Washington, he'll continue that trend. So I think if when Juju walks out of that door, I think Kevin Colbert will do a nice job in the draft of drafting his replacement. Jerry, we looked at the tight ends. There's a lot of money involved with those guys, and you don't see much production. Eric Ebron is a pass catcher, but I don't know that he's a very good blocker. Can they afford to have those guys back, or do you think they look elsewhere and start over at tight end? No, I think you'll see Eric Ebron come back, Bob. I would agree with you. He's not an inline blocker, but then they know that. You know, if you're, you have a Mercedes trying to do the job of a Ford pickup and it's just not a good fit. But I think he'll be back, but I think you'll see Vance McDonald. They'll have to part ways with him because of the salary cap. He'll, he'll be a $7 million hit next year. Eric Ebron is a $7 million hit. You can't keep both those guys, and I think you'll see them move on from Vance McDonald. Yeah, trying to save money as best they can because the salary cap number should be coming down given all the pandemic losses. All right, now let's talk about the running backs because, again, they're in a situation where they don't have many guarantees back there. And James Conner, of course, is up. He's a free agent. Benny Snell Jr. is going to count only a million on the cap figure. Then other guys really do not really figure in big problems there when it comes to numbers. But let's talk about that, Charlie. James Conner, is he a capable NFL starter and will he return? I think he is a capable starter. The problem is the money won't fit on what he thinks he deserves on the open market. So I think they move on from James Conner. But now from the coaching staff's perspective, this organization is going to have to now go back thoroughly and look at every snap that Benny Snell had during the season, evaluate it, determine whether or not he is that bell cow like Mike Tomlin uh, likes to refer to his starting running backs. If he is, great. They'll move forward that way. If not, again, they'll replenish and add somebody to that group. All right, the bell cow. If he does move on, there is room for another bell cow. But, Jerry, is Benny Snell capable of being that guy? No, Bob, and I don't think they look at him that way. I think if you see them move on from James Conner, which I believe they will for the reasons Charlie uh, mentioned, uh, I think you will see them take a running back in the first or second round of the draft. Benny Snell is a nice, competent backup, but he is nothing more than that. He's not viewed as that by, uh, anything more than that by the Steelers. They will hold on to him, but they're not going to look at him as their feature back. All right, now let's talk about the offensive line because they are the jumper cables to the running backs. You've got to open up holes. they got some problems here with salary cap numbers. Both Pouncey and DeCastro, like Ben Roethlisberger, are in the final year of a contract, and they count heavily in their cap. Villanueva is free to go. So is Filer. So is Zach Banner. So let's talk about this. And, Charlie, do you expect to see a major overhaul with this offensive line? I do, and I don't think there's any way that Big Al comes back. I don't think Fowler is, is coming back as well. So that left side is going to be new. Now the question is, what happens with Marquise Pouncey? A lot of speculation that this could possibly be his last season. If that happens, man, there could be a domino effect because I don't know if David DeCastro wants to play with anybody else underneath center in that particular perspective. So there's a lot of questions, but I do think the caveat to this is Zach Banner coming back from ACL surgery. He comes back. I think the Sealers bring him back, and he could be your left tackle next year uh, if that's the case then what do they do with other guys Jerry you got Filer as we said he's free to go I mean depth's always a big problem with the offensive line and these guys are getting older so is Banner back and should they bring him back 
Well, I think they'll bring Zach Banner back because they can almost get him on the cheap. He was only a million dollars this year, and he didn't uh, and he didn't even play this year other than the first quarter. So I think you'll see them bring him back at a very reasonable price. They'll move on from Al Villanueva. Depending on what they do with Marquise Pouncey and David DeCastro will depend on what they do with Matt Filer. I believe they will try to re-sign Matt Filer at, for a right tackle, but then it comes down to do you keep uh, one or two of uh, uh, Marquise Pouncey and David DeCastro, and that could influence what Ben does, believe me. Yeah, a lot of dominoes in play here for this uh, when it comes to the offensive line. All right, guys, thanks for coming up. We did it with the offense, so it's now time to dissect the Steelers' defense. Our guys, Charlie Batch and Jerry Dulac, return with more offseason predictions. Keep it locked right here. It's Steelers' Extra Point. Want to sell your Pittsburgh area home faster and for the best price? Then make it Remax Select Realty. Remax Select agents sell up to three times as many homes as other agents. That means more buyers searching your neighborhood right now. Call Remax Select today. We'll meet and list your home tomorrow. Plus, get your free Remax market price evaluation. Selling your home is a big decision. Make it Remax Select Realty. See us now at selecthomefinder.com. Wi-Fi. It really does make everything better. Switch, switch, jump. Yeah. So at Xfinity, we're not stopping it fast. Don't mind me, come on. Pick that up, pick that up. Right there, right there. Right we're there. breaking the gig barrier with Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That means now you'll have gig speeds over Wi-Fi to power every device in the house. Can your internet do that? Introducing gig Wi-Fi. It's the fastest Wi-Fi you can get. And it's only from Xfinity. Xfinity, the future of awesome. We are a team. We are a unit. We are a family. No, literally. We are a suburban family of football fans. That's our neighbor. Hi, Bob. And that's the inflatable screen we forgot to properly secure. Pepsi. Made for football. Watch it. This is a game changer. Jason Waller, founder of Power Home Solar. The solar movement is on. It's time to own your power. With our American-made solar panels, we've teamed up with Generac's backup battery system so you can reduce those energy bills and never be without power again. And right now, score big with $2,000 instant cash. Generac and Power Home Solar, the number one team. Welcome back to Steelers Extra Point, presented by Neighborhood Ford Store. All right, we're back, and thanks for joining us as we look ahead to the Steelers in 2021. So many questions, and some of them do involve the defensive line as well, because again, like if you look at some of the offensive positions, they have a lot of money invested, and they are top-heavy in many ways. Cam Hayward signed this past offseason. He signed through 2024, big cap figure. Stephon Tuitt still has two years remaining, but Tyson Alualu does not. He's free. Wormley's free. Then he got a bunch of young guys over there. Charlie, I want to start with you on Tyson Alualu. He had significant playing time. He was really good. If you look at some of the numbers specific to him, good, but he will cost more. Can they afford to bring him back or do they go elsewhere? No, I think they can, and, and I think you know, just watching him, I thought this was his best season of his NFL career, and this is his 11th season, so I think they have to figure out a way to bring him back. When you saw when he was in the lineup, man, he was dominant up front, and he jailed very well with Tua and Cam Hayward, so I think they have to figure out a way to get him involved in, uh, back on this roster in 2021. All right, linebackers also an area of need when you think about it. And, Jerry, we talk about some of these numbers here with regard to their salaries, and you'll see that T.J. Watt is going to be number one when it comes to lining up and getting money. He signed only for one more year, but you know it's going to be a mega contract. They don't have that luxury with Bud Dupree, and they have a lot of younger guys after that. Vince Williams is an interesting case as well. Spillane and Williamson, they got to decide who they want back, but I will start, Jerry, with Bud Dupree. He got injured. There's no guarantee that he could be at the same level where he left before the injury. Do they have any chance of signing him long term or should they even consider a franchise tag? No, Bob, they, one, they can't afford a franchise tag because of the reduced salary cap. So that's out of the question. And two, they wouldn't sign him to a long term contract, nor do I think any team in the league is going to sign him to a long term contract because of his injury and he won't be ready to start of the year. But I do think, and I've been told, that he'll probably still, some, uh, still be able to sign some type of a one-year, uh, $9, $10 million 
prove it contract. And I don't think that's going to be with the Steelers. I think it's going to be with another NFL team. So I don't see really any possibility of Bud coming back. It's too bad because he's playing his best in the last two years. Right. And, you know, he was cashing in big time on that, uh, uh, you know, one year he had to play here as they picked up the option and franchise. Anyway, let's talk about T.J. Watt. We'll move on because I think he's going to be back. Everybody knows that. The question is for how much money, Charlie. Uh, one more year left on the deal. Do they do that deal right now? Oh, absolutely they do. I mean, he, this is a guy that you have to sign a contract extension to. Hopefully it frees up some cap space and you know you lock him in. But at, with the, to Jerry's point, he doesn't think that Buzz going to be here. I think that there's a small chance that depending on how the market unfolds, that maybe there's a chance that he could be here for one more year. Not under the franchise tag, though. All right. Speaking of that linebacking, Jerry, back to you on Vince Williams. Uh, he's getting up there in age. You know, they have Devin Bush coming back, so that should be fine, although he's coming off the surgery, and they have some younger guys there. Uh, what about Vince Williams? How effective can be he can be in 2021 and beyond? Well, Bob, I don't think they really want to move on from Vince Williams because he's such a good run stuffer. Um, but it's going to be, uh, you know, it could come down to a question of money. Uh, I think for sure you will see Cam Hayward and Stephon Tuitt's contracts restructured to try and create some room uh, on that defense and are going to have some of those issues in the back end as well but I think they would like to bring Vince Williams back um, you know they maybe they'll give him the James Harrison deal where you you know you take a reduced salary or or that's it but I do think they want to have him back in some form all right, now let's take a look at the defensive backfield and corners, then safeties. Uh, Joe Hayden cost an awful lot, so does Steve Nelson. Uh, there's a chance they can move on from either one of those guys because their contracts are up at the end of this coming season. They can also restructure there. You have Hilton and Sutton, very interesting, uh, and then some younger guys. But those two guys are going to have to be number one and two on their list of who they bring back from that slot position. As far as the safeties are concerned, again, they don't have to do anything with Minka Dispatcher or Terrell Edmonds right now because they're, they're signed through the 2022 season. So, Jerry, is it a case of pick one when it comes to Sutton or Hilton? Well, Bob, you know, they already paid Mike Hilton uh, $3.2 million this year as their nickelback. And let's face it, while he's very good along the line of scrimmage, he is a liability in pass coverage. And I don't know that they will even bring him back for more money on a one-year deal. And because Cam Sutton played so much this year and they got an extended look at him, Obviously, that's going to be the cheaper route. Uh, Cam Sutton actually better in coverage than Mike Hilton. I think you'll see them move on from uh, Mike Hilton and and uh, resign and bring back Cam Sutton. All right, then you get to the cornerbacks. You got two veterans, as I said, Charlie. If you look at their uh, cap hits, they're big. Joe Hayden unfortunately missed the last couple of games with that COVID situation. He's now cleared from that, but. What happens to him next year? Is it a case of restructuring? Do they move on from him? What do they do with Joe Hayden? Yeah, I mean, that conversation is going to happen, but I think a lot of it depends on what the salary cap is going to be for next season. And right now, nobody knows that. And when you have a high cap number, trust me, players talk about this, the uncertainty of whether or not they're going to come back, especially when you fall short in the manner that the Steelers did. So if they can, great. If not, I fully expect them to make a run at Cam Sutton because he showed the ability to play both inside and outside on this defense. All right, now that we've broken down the roster, we're going to take a look at the Steelers' schedule for 2021, and it's not easy. It's coming up next right here on the Steelers Extra Point Show. Because of this, we built Ford Super Duty to be the most capable heavy-duty pickup ever. Because of this, we built Ford F-150 with 375 horsepower. Because of this, we built Ford Ranger with a terrain management system. And because Ford trucks are built for this, you made Ford America's best-selling brand. Get a 2020 F-150 with total savings of $10,000. Or lease for just $3.99 a month for 24 months. Only at your neighborhood Ford store. Fast Wi-Fi. It really does make everything better. Switch, switch, jump. So at Xfinity, we're not stopping it fast. Don't mind me, come on. Pick that up, pick that up. Right there, right there. Right there. We're breaking the gig barrier with Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That means now you'll have gig speeds over Wi-Fi to power every device in the house. Can your internet do that? Introducing gig Wi-Fi. It's the fastest Wi-Fi you can get. And it's only from Xfinity. Xfinity, the future of awesome.
You want top quality roofing? Replacing a roof isn't just shingles. It's a complete engineered system. Being an Owens Corning preferred contractor, JP Roofing and Siding understands how the whole system works. With over 38 years in the business, JP Roofing and Siding takes pride in their craftsmanship and do all their jobs right the first time. If you're looking to get your roof replaced, hire JP Roofing and Siding. Quality long remembered at a fair price. Welcome back to Steelers Extra Point, presented by Neighborhood Ford Store. Welcome back, everyone, along with Jerry Dulac and Charlie Batch. I'm Bob Pompiani, and now it's time to think about 2021. We're in 2021. Before you know it, the season will start again. And as a division champ, Charlie, that means your schedule always gets tougher. What about their 2021 schedule? Yes, Bob, we're going to take a look at the road ahead, and this is presented by your neighborhood four store. When you look at this schedule for the 2021 season, this is a tough schedule. It's going to be a lot tougher than what it was this year. Just looking at it, you have four playoff teams that you have to face, and that's not even including the two playoff teams that you have within your division. So this is going to be a lot tougher this go around this season. Yeah, and when you look at it, there are four division champion teams on that list. Three of them are still playing uh you know three teams in the afc playoffs counting the browns now who are the last team standing from the afc north go figure that who would have thought that jerry as we sit here right now i know it's a long way off i'm not going to ask you necessarily for a season prediction i want to know though Good. where the steelers fit uh in the afc north as of this moment well bob um you know coming into this year nobody would have thought they would have started 11 and 0 and won the afc north so it, you know it's difficult to say um, if you look at it right now, you'd almost have to say maybe the Browns are the favorite or Baltimore uh, because the Steelers have so many decisions ahead of them. When you look at that schedule, too, uh, yeah, three of those uh, four uh, remaining teams are uh, on their schedule. And those three games, the Chiefs, the Packers and Bills are all on the road. So that that's going to be a, a formidable task for them. And with so many changes, it's it, to expect them to go 12 and four again might be a little difficult. All right, let's talk about the draft real quick before we go. Your guess, that'll be here before you know it. Charlie, just hypothetically, we talked about the need for a run game, but they don't normally spend first-round draft choices on running backs per se. But if a guy like Najee Harris is available from Alabama, how good he is, would you invest that or would you look elsewhere to get a running back? Well, you definitely have to consider it if he falls that direction. I don't expect the Steelers to move up in the draft to make a move that way. So if it falls to him, yes. But I fully expect him to now identify that offensive line as one of their first round picks all right Jerry do you agree with that or how would you uh, look at the first and second round pick specifically well Bob if Najee Harris were there when they pick I'd jump all over that but I think it's safe to say when you look at what they're going to do in what in whatever order it is it's going to be running back offensive line and edge rusher because they'll need a backup with uh, Bud Dupree gone so one of those three will go in a, whatever order it is you can pretty much figure it's going to come from that all right I have just a few seconds real quick Browns Chiefs today on KDK Jerry who do you like I picked the Brownies. I Ooh. like them 37-34. <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm going with the Chiefs, Bob. I got to stick with the defending champs. And Daryl, our director in there, is loving you, Jerry, because he's a big, I figured he was. Browns so is my fan. wife. <laughs> All right. You'll see that game coming up. Jerry and Charlie, thank you very much. All your season expertise. We appreciate that. For all the guys, Rich Walsh and our tremendous and talented crew here, led by Craig McConnell and Jared Barton, thanks for joining us here on Steeler Coverage. We'll do it again next season, and we look forward to seeing you then. Coming up today, it's Chiefs and Browns, KDK at 3 o'clock. We'll see you tonight on the show now. And they're off with Derby Cash from the Pennsylvania Lottery. It's simple. Select the amount of play and the number of consecutive plays. Next, pick one play type and pick your horses. Finally, take your ticket and watch them race towards the finish. You'll experience entertaining action like never before with a new race every four minutes. Pick winners and cash in with Derby Cash, the new game from the Pennsylvania Lottery. Levin's Holiday Weekend 4-Day Sale is here. Shop now and save up to 50% off doorbusters, closeouts, and special buys. Plus, get an extra 10% store-wide and a $50 gift card, which makes our popular Chine Sofa, not $8.99, now an incredible $5.97. Sealy Posturepedic Pillow Topper Anniversary Jubilee Ultra Comfort Queen Mattress. After all discounts, $6.68 and 60-month special financing through Monday at Levin's. Citizens fits the flow of your life with convenient and easy to use tech that makes you ready to wake up, pay your friend back with Zelle in the Citizens mobile app, all before your morning snooze. 
Quickly buy groceries with your Citizens Card and your digital wallet for your next culinary adventure. And easily deposit that first aid check with Mobile Deposit. So whether you're relaxing, creating, or celebrating, we have tech that fits the flow of your life. Citizens. Made ready.